Hello everyone and welcome. In front of me is the Honda Civic Type R engine. This is a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder. But before we get into this engine, I wanna talk about the Honda Civic Type R because the car is putting down some pretty incredible numbers. Now, if everyone will take their assigned reading material, Motor Trend, August 2018, and turn to pages 52 and 53, you will see what I am talking about. So Motor Trend did back-to-back -back testing with the Ford Focus RS, the Honda Civic Type R, the Subaru WRX STI Type RA, and the Volkswagen Golf R. Now the numbers are pretty fascinating because the Honda Civic, the front wheel drive Honda Civic Type R, was faster to 60 miles per hour than both the all wheel drive Golf R and the all wheel drive Subaru STI. And to 70 miles per hour, it was faster than the Ford Focus RS also all wheel drive. And it was a full second faster to 100 miles per hour versus all of the cars, nearly two seconds faster to 100 miles per hour versus the Golf R. In the quarter mile, it does lose to the Ford Focus RS by two tenths of a second, but it has nearly a five mile per hour higher trap speed. The Civic has the best braking of the group, the only car out of all four to stop from 60 miles per hour to zero in less than 100 feet. The Civic also ties for the best lateral Gs along along with the Ford Focus RS at 1.01 Gs. Now here's the real kicker. So they took all four cars around a track, Streets of Willow, and the Honda Civic Type R was the fastest. And it beat the Ford Focus RS by over a full second, and it beat the STI Type RA as well as the Golf R by over two seconds. And it's doing all this for far less money, $5,600 less than the next cheapest competitor and $15,000 less than the limited edition Subaru STI Type RA. Now the Civic Type R is the only front wheel drive car of the group and this helps it save weight. It's about 300 pounds less than the other cars. And you might be thinking, well, maybe it's just smaller than the other cars. It's actually not. It has the longest wheelbase. It has the greatest track width. It has the most rear leg room and it has the second most cargo space of the group. And thanks to the two wheel drive platform and the efficient two liter engine, it actually has the best combined fuel economy rating of the group. Looks of course are subjective and the car is front wheel drive. So whether or not you believe front wheel drive is more or less fun uh, than the others, Honda has certainly proven that it can be done from a performance level that it can hang with the all-wheel drive vehicles. It's got the fastest car around the track uh, of the group. It's got arguably the most practical car of the group. It's got the most efficient car of the group and it does all this at by far the lowest price point. So that in itself is very impressive. All right, so now let's start talking about the engine and you can actually buy these as a crate engine for sanctioned racing applications and put it in whatever you want so long as as you are using it on the track. As previously mentioned, this is an inline four cylinder engine. You can see here it is turbocharged. And also you can see that it has an aluminum block and aluminum head forged crankshaft and forged connecting rods. You can also see that the exhaust manifold is actually integrated within the cylinder head, so it comes directly out into the turbocharger. Now this saves weight and makes for a smaller overall package. It also helps with turbo response and it helps improve emissions. The pistons inside are cooled by oil jets and they also have internal cooling galleries, which is used to help reduce the temperatures of the piston rings. Now Honda claims this is the same technology they use in their form Formula One engines for the pistons, which means it's reliable. Wait, no, that's not right. Now looking underneath the valve cover and looking at the valve train, you can see we have dual overhead camshafts and these are actually chain driven. Now these camshafts are actually hollow. Uh, they're thin walled and they do that to reduce weight and reduce rotational inertia. And as far as this chain drive, Honda claims that it was designed to last for the life of the engine, so it's not supposed to ever require any maintenance. Each camshaft has variable timing control, so you can change the valve phasing for both the intake as well as the exhaust. You can also see that it has VTEC here on the exhaust camshaft, so you can see the lower profile there and then the higher lift profile here uh, versus the intake camshaft just has a single cam profile. And so the reason for this, because it's turbocharged, they actually don't 
don't need the additional lift to push air into the engine. Uh, the turbocharger does a nice job of pushing that air into the engine. But on the exhaust side, after you've had combustion occur and you have that really high internal pressure, and then you're also working against the turbocharger as you're trying to push that exhaust out, you want to try and reduce the resistance for those exhaust gases. And so they enable a higher lift cam profile to help bring those exhaust gases out at the higher RPM. Now, speaking about the exhaust, the exhaust valves are actually filled with sodium. And so the reason Honda does this is to help keep them cooler. So that sodium inside helps transfer heat away from the head of the valve. Now, Honda claims that because they use these sodium filled valves, they actually can run a slightly leaner air fuel mixture because they don't have to rely on a rich air fuel mixture cooling those exhaust valves as much. And by using that slightly leaner air fuel mixture, they get better efficiency and better power. As far as the intake, this is a high tumble intake and Honda has chosen to go with a higher pressure direct injection fuel system and they claim by using the direct injection system they've actually increased torque across the entire RPM range. Along with direct injection, they've chosen to use smaller spark plugs. So these are actually 12 millimeters wide versus traditional 14 millimeter spark plugs. And the reason why they've done this is to allow for more space within the combustion chamber and actually save a bit of weight with the spark plug. So you've got more space for the valves as well as the direct injection system. So here's a traditional spark plug removal tool. And here you can see it won't even go in, uh, won't fit to remove that spark plug. It's too small. You need a smaller size. Now the engine is designed to have very little maintenance requirements. So for the first 100,000 miles, all you have to do is change the fluids and filters. Then at 100,000 miles, you're going to want to have the water pump inspected, you're going to want to have the valves adjusted, and you're going to want to replace the spark plugs. All right, so now let's start getting into the differences between the Accord engine and the Type R engine, starting with horsepower and torque. So here we're looking at a dyno plot. We've got horsepower and torque on the left, and then we've got engine RPM here on the bottom. And in green, we have the Accord. The solid line there is torque. The dotted line is horsepower. And then in red, we have the solid line is torque for the Type R. And then the purplish dotted line is horsepower for the Type R. And as you can see, the Accord actually starts off with more torque faster. So it actually has a smaller turbocharger and it spools up a little bit quicker and it reaches peak torque sooner, 273 pound feet at just 1500 RPM where it takes all the way to 2,500 RPM for the Honda Civic Type R, which is at 295 pound-feet. So a bit more torque, but a little bit later on. After that, of course, the power of the Type R surpasses that of the Accord, peaking at 6,500 RPM, 306 horsepower, versus 252 horsepower for the Accord at 6,500 RPM. Now, the Type R revs all the way to 7,000, versus the Accord, which stops at 6,800. Now, as mentioned, the Accord's turbocharger is slightly smaller, so it has a lower inertia turbine, so it spools up a little bit faster, and it also uses a more aggressive angle on the turbine blades to help spool up at a low RPM. Now, it provides less boost, so the Accord is pushing out peak 20.8 PSI versus the Type R, which is at 22.8 PSI, and the small difference, along with different ignition timing, means that the Accord engine is running on regular gas versus the Type R engine running on premium gas. Now, both engines have a compression ratio of 9.8 to 1, but the Accord actually does have different pistons versus the Type R engine, and it also has a completely different fuel system that's lower flow and more about control rather than high flow fuel flow for those higher horsepower figures that the Type R engine has. And one final major differentiator between the Accord and the Type R engine is that the Accord engine actually has balance shafts incorporated within the oil pan, so it helps to remove those second order vibrations. Whereas in the Type R, they don't have the balance shafts, they accept that additional vibration for a little bit more horsepower. If you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave those below. Thanks for watching.